today I'm going to be talking to you about, I suck at this. Hey guys, it's Brandy and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about starting your own hair company. Um, while I was away from YouTube, I did start my own hair company in August of 2018 where I specialize in custom made lace front and lace closure units as well as selling bundled hair in the texture straight body wave and brazilian curly so first step to starting your own company is choosing a name so i have like my little notes here so for me it was easy for me to choose a name because ashland is my middle name <laughs> fun fact ashland is my middle name um, I'm not going to say that I'm fluent in French, but I took French in high school and avec just means with. So my, <laughs> my brand or my name or my company translates to with Ashland. And what I mean by that is kind of like when you get hair from me or I make you a wig or whatever it may be, it's like you're getting a piece of me. So avec Ashland means with me in a sense. Um, so for you, you just have to figure out what do you want your brand to be. A lot of people may just use their name. Some people may come up with a creative theme and kind of use that theme as their brand's name. It's really up to you. But the most important thing is making sure that no one already has that name. So making sure no one has trademarked that name. So you can't have a hairline called like hair like McDonald's because you're gonna get sued so just being cognizant of that when choosing a name is really important so the next step is building your brand which is so much different in today's day and age um, most people that I find that have hair companies that are successful originated from like social media whether it was Instagram or YouTube or Twitter and Vine, you know, like these people had platforms before they started their business. For me, however, I didn't start with a platform. Like when I started my hair page, I had zero followers. I think as of today, I have 172. Like I didn't start with this huge buzz around my name. Like I came into it with no one knowing me. So you just have to understand where you are and how to market yourself based on the following that you have. For myself, because I didn't have a big social media presence, I use the presence that I did have. So I am a student at Howard University. I'm actually in pharmacy school there, but I did go to undergrad there as well. And I used Howard University to start um, advertising my products. So I would be in like group chats whether it was like housing group chats um there is this group chat that's basically dedicated to like anything beauty so there's girls that do nails there there's girls that do lashes it's just one huge group chat for people to advertise what they do and that's where i started advertising that hey i make wigs hey i sell hair and that's how some of my first clients started to come in so that's a good starting point i would say also with social media being a big a big thing and instagram being free of course to make an instagram page i made an instagram page and i'm slowly building my following up i'm not gonna lie to y'all and say like oh i have a hundred thousand followers i don't i wish i did but i don't and that's fine because i know the followers that i do have they're genuine um they do interact with me um and i think that's more important like don't get discouraged and feel like you need to buy followers because those followers that you're buying aren't going to end up buying your your products you want people to actually find your page and be interested in your page and you know actually want to genuinely buy your products um so the next step is getting kind of like i guess making yourself marketable in a sense like getting logos and a website up and all of that and the reason i say that's important is because when i started out i didn't have a logo for real well let me not say i didn't have a logo i've always had a logo i am working on getting another one um but i didn't have a f official website and what's hard about that is when someone's trying to let's say refer their friend to you it's like you're they're just exchanging phone numbers 
they can't really say, oh, go to this website X, Y, and Z. So I encourage everyone to get a website because it makes you look like you're on your P's and Q's. Even if you just started out, like having a website, just people will put more trust in you. And on top of having a website, if you can buy your domain, so my website is www.avecashland.com. It's not avecashland.bigcartel or, or wix. Like it's nothing like that. It's literally the name of my company.com. Um, so I would suggest buying your domain name just because it makes it easier for people to find you and it just looks like you put more into your business because you actually bought your own domain name i don't remember how much it costs i honestly don't i'll look it up and put it in the description box but i highly encourage that and i use wix to build my website at the time i was thinking about paying someone to build it but this was like the beginning stage and like i only had like two customers so i was just like hmm this might not be the best investment because I could easily not get any more customers and now I just spent all my money on this website that's no one's gonna click on so I took the time to build a website on Wix I will say it's a lot of work it's a it's a lot of work um, I thought it was gonna be easier than what it was but yeah it took me a, a while but it was worth it um, I'm still learning things to stay like I'm still building my website I still want to add new photos like do a photo shoot but I will say Wix is a good basis until you get the money to be able to pay like a graphic designer to do everything for you um, speaking of kind of just like making sure you have everything together make sure you actually have like your wholesaler together or whoever you're drop shipping from. I mean, I don't drop ship, so I can only speak on having a wholesaler. Make sure that wholesaler is reliable before you launch a business. Like, you don't wanna launch a business and this is a wholesaler that you put in orders and they're never fulfilled on time. You put in orders, they send you the wrong thing. Like, you wanna make sure these people are reliable. Um, I suggest that you work with these people prior to launching your business I suggest that you wear their hair for at least like two months prior to launching your business um, I suggest anything that you sell on your website you have tested out so for me I had already worn the company's hair that I decided to use as my wholesaler um, so I had known from previous experience you know how long the hair lasts what products should I recommend to clients to put in their hair you know I just I knew a lot about the hair because I have personally worn it so I think that's a good thing for you to do as the owner of that company because when people complain they're not gonna complain to your wholesaler they're gonna complain to you when people write bad reviews they're not gonna write bad reviews about your wholesaler they're gonna write those reviews about you so you have to take all responsibility for this hair even though you're not the one in the factory producing it you know what I mean so just be mindful of that because as a small business that can make or break you really fast like if you only have five customers and four out of the five said your shit was trash like why would i buy from you you know so be mindful of that also keep in mind your profit margins as a small business for me i try to profit about 40 percent on everything that i do when it comes to me making wigs that's a I calculate that a different way because I include like a base, I guess, fee because I know how long it takes for me to make a wig. So like, let's say for instance, it takes me three hours to make a wig, right? And I'm saying for those three hours, I want to pay myself $30 an hour. I'm just using figures right now. So that would mean that I'm going to add $90 to 40% profit margin on the hair if I'm providing it. So if the hair costs me a hundred dollars i'm going to charge you 140 and then i'm going to charge you an extra 90 to make the wig which means that i end up charging you a total of 230 dollars for something that costs me a hundred dollars and this is not including like your dome cap like your needle you know like it's not including those small things you know but that's just kind of like a basis of how you can establish your profit margins and the reason that that's so important, especially as a new business, is that you're going to run into times that customers are going to complain. Like, it happens to everyone. It happens to even the best of businesses. So don't beat yourself up if it happens. But you have to be able to, 
you have to be financially able to act on that so if a customer wants a refund you have to have the money to be able to give them a refund if a customer wants i don't know ten dollars fifty dollars off you have to be able to financially be able to do that the issue is that when you make your prices too low or you're not even profiting when those issues arise you now have to go into your own pockets and if you don't have that money where is it coming from that means you're taking from yourself you're taking from you're taking food out of your mouth you're taking away from your light bill you're taking away from your insurance you're taking away from your car note so you have to make sure that you're putting money to the side especially your profits for those times and that's another important point is making sure you're separating your business money from your regular money because any money that you're making in the beginning stages you should honestly be pouring back into your company like you shouldn't make a hundred dollars and spend a hundred dollars just like just because you made a three hundred dollar sale doesn't mean you made three hundred dollars that's something you have to keep in mind also as a small business keeping in mind what are you actually profiting because the money you see is a gross amount that's not what you profited so it's easier if you have a separate account set up for your business and then another account set up for your personal or if you do everything through PayPal that way you can track your sales you just need some way of monitoring what you're what you're bringing in and not confusing that with I don't know if you work at an office or if you're in school and you get a refund check like just making sure you're not confusing that money and then my last bullet point is getting in retaining clients so this goes back to my previous point of just making sure that you're advertising on any platform that you have so Instagram at school through flyers word of mouth just making sure that you're putting yourself out there I know a lot of people are fearful because there's so many hair companies like so many but at the end of the day the hair business is like a billion dollar industry and everyone can't sell hair to everyone like I can't sell hair to everyone at Howard I can't sell hair to everyone in DC I can't sell hair to everyone in New Orleans like people are going to go to different businesses so you can't be fearful of what the next person is doing just make sure that the clients that you do get you're doing your best to make them happy and you're doing the best to get them to refer you to someone else so what I mean by that is let's say Susie buys from you make sure Susie's experience is great because you don't know how many friends Susie has that wears hair that are looking for someone to buy hair from and Susie might refer them to you so just make sure you're doing your best when it comes to customer service unfortunately that's not something that can necessarily be taught I feel like it's very beneficial if you've worked in the service industry or you've worked a job and you've learned the whole model that the customer is always right that is a great foundation to have before opening up a business because you will honestly learn how to mitigate those issues um so i think that is pretty much about it i know that i kind of like went over some topics pretty fast but i didn't want it to make it too in-depth and too detailed i mean if you guys do want me to do a more detailed video i will just comment below um but besides that that's it so thank you guys for watching my video um i look forward to seeing you guys soon bye guys